My name is Karen Burton, and this is my discussion for SLIS 749 Week 2. One issue I see in how health information is used is the failure to match the approach to the problem. This can be exacerbated by policies and procedures already in place, as well as the preferences of the people implementing the changes. For example, a psychological approach that requires an individual to change their behavior may not work if the problem is organizational in nature. Another common problem is that not everyone involved in health communication is familiar with the terminology. A patient's health care team may be using technical language and vocabulary that the patient doesn't understand, and the patient may not have any idea of what their medical problem is or how it works, much less any potential procedures that may benefit them. One solution to this could be educating the patient on their condition and the terminology commonly used when discussing that condition before attempting to implement a solution. Translating evidence into practice can be a very time-consuming process. In Dr. Tu Kiefner's lecture this week, she said that physicians need to read an average of 19 original articles per day to keep up with their field. That expectation is neither feasible or sustainable, and that is where knowledge brokers come in. They provide a link between knowledge users, such as doctors, to the scientific literature. They can use their time and expertise to find and evaluate current research, then communicate this to knowledge users. There are many models that can be followed for translating evidence into practice. I enjoyed learning about one used by public health professionals in Canada called evidence-informed decision-making. I liked this one because the steps closely followed the scientific method, which I am already familiar with. This model includes seven steps. First, you must define a searchable question. Then you search for evidence. Where do you do that? The PubMed tutorial that we've been working on is a good place to start. Step number three, you appraise the quality of evidence. Is it one paper, a systematic review, a meta-analysis? Step number four, you synthesize the evidence. You put it into context with what you already know. And then step number five, you adapt that evidence to the specific situation, in other words, the patient, that led you to ask the question in the first place. Step number six is implement the solution. And step number seven is evaluate the impact. I think evaluation is an often overlooked step in many types of processes, but must be considered. Only then can a truly informed, evidence-based decision be made.